Hey, thank you, Ilya. Um, so, uh, multi-center mutation caller calling, what is that? A somewhat enigmatic topic and possibly uh, mundane, were it not from the, for the fact that the mutation calls that we generate underpin so much of what we do in TCGA. So that makes this a uh, necessary topic and uh, one that has undergone itself great evolution during the course of uh, the TCGA. So uh, what I'm going to do uh, for the next 15 minutes is review the approaches to somatic mutation calling to consider what it is to call mutations it, with one caller, uh, talk about the early benchmarking of somatic mutation callers that we did early on in the project, look at the early trials of three-center calling and adoption of standards for the three-center calling, and look at the current status of multicenter calling and new developments in mutation calling. So uh, <clears throat> the whole uh, trick to this game is to be able to distinguish error from real variation, the real biological variation that we seek. There are two sources of that error. Some comes from uh, the sequencing machines itself themselves and are inherent in the base callers, and fortunately, most of this is randomly distributed, and uh, the base calls come with calibrations of Q values that uh, enable us to distinguish the truth from uh, error, and we're able to fi uh, filter most of this, and yet some of this escapes because there's a fair amount of it across the uh, 50 uh, billion reads that we take for a uh, exome. And um, uh, when these errors happen to be coincident, they're found then at allele fractions that might be similar to what we're looking for in the very he heterogeneous tumor environments that we have. Uh, that's been described in other talks. I'm not going to go into that in this talk. But then uh, there is systematic error that comes from mapping and alignment ambiguities. There's a lot of difficulty with 100 base reads and the uh, structure of the genome that we have that makes this a very tricky problem. And this leads to high quality errors that are much more, or high quality base differences that actually are reflective of true base differences, but the read just happens to be in the wrong place and so uh, they can easily be state mistaken for mutations. So the way the uh, current callers work is that they all have some, uh, what I'll call for lack of a better term, a truth engine that distinguishes the uh, real variation from, uh, 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 from sequencing error. And uh, these, uh, uh, formulations, which are largely Bayesian or log odds based formulations, give uh, or output uh, tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of events, which then, oops, which then have to be uh, filtered. And it's at this point that heuristics come into play. And each uh, calling center applies heuristics in a slightly different way, and most of the variation, uh, or a very large fraction of the variation that passes those so-called truth filters, then get uh, filtered out. Uh, the best documentation of this is in the paper by uh, my colleague uh, Chris Sobolskis at the Broad when they did their Mutech publication, and what this shows is uh, that at each um, sequencing depth, uh, you're filtering uh, a, a significant fraction of the variance away uh, due to these various uh, uh, characteristics which are being heuristically applied. Um, this amounts to up to 90 percent of the variation that came through the first step is now disappearing. And uh, this is going to be important as we go along because I believe this is where most of the variation between callers uh, emerges. <coughs> so with the uh, mutations that we collect from a single caller, we get 
actually uh, very nice profiles of uh, significantly mutated genes. This is one example from colorectal cancer, but now we have uh, 10 or 12 tumors in which we've collected similar profiles as this. And the profiles end up making a lot of sense. You can place these mutations into pathways that describe what's going on in a tumor in actually in detail that we've never seen before. Um, but uh, unfortunately, if you go back and compare the calls that uh, different callers are making on one or two tumors, uh, you see a picture that is at first uh, somewhat disturbing. And this is where we were with the first benchmark uh, uh, proposed by David Hausler uh, back about in February uh, 2011, where here we have uh, on the left uh, uh, what were the uh, somatic calls passing all the filters from each of three centers. And you can see that the uh, number of variants in the center is fairly small compared to the total, varia total variation discovered by the callers in the union set. And in particular, a lot more seemed to be going on in the variation that was unique to any given caller than there was in the overlap. Um, so uh, then on to uh, benchmark two, uh, things didn't look a whole lot better there. Uh, 310 was the uh, intersect from four callers here. And uh, again, you can see that going around the outside, the number of events that were unique to all these different callers was much larger. And so this left the sinking feeling that there was a lot of true variation possibly being left on the table and a lot going on analyzed. Uh, David took this another interesting step further and from that, uh, 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 from the next benchmark did a uh, analysis where for each center that was being considered in a Venn diagram, he looked at the top 100 calls from each patient that uh, was being studied here. And looking in the top 100 calls of just the UCSC caller, there were 10 calls that the UCSC caller was considering high quality that no other caller was seeing. And going around the horn here, we go over to the Wash U caller, looking at their best calls. There were 143 that nobody else had seen. Uh, for Baylor uh, here, there was about 1,000. These are unvalidated calls, so even though the center is saying they're high quality, we don't uh, really know. But uh, And here, uh, we're 55 from the Broad. So uh, potentially, there was a lot uh, not being, uh, not uh, being turned up in the analysis of any given cohort by a single caller. So, um, <clears throat> okay, similar results were obtained in a set of colorectal samples where uh, UCSC and Broad uh, made calls. Uh, you can see a lot more going on in the uh, unique calls and uh, similarly the high quality variants uh, were numerous in the, in the unique calls. So the conclusion from this was obviously the discordance between callers was high and that was pretty dismaying. Uh, and the high qu quality calls as defined by one caller were missed, were being missed by the others. So that particular discordancy was uh, distressing. So uh, the suggestion was that uh, at least if we did multi-center calling, we would uh, ameliorate some of the uh, uh, possibilities of false negatives. Okay. Uh, by the way, um, it's also uh, the fact that if you were to apply callers just to diploid analysis, where here you have the tremendous benefit of an expectation of about 50-50 in the reference and variant alleles, which is a very powerful constraint on the data. Uh, if you look at the results from five different callers on 
uh, uh, diploid genomes, they only agree amongst themselves by uh, 57 percent. So um, uh, it's not just in somatic mutation calling that uh, there can be uh, difficulties, but even in this business as a whole. And my sense is that a lot of this, uh, as I said before, is coming from the fact that we use heuristic uh, callers to help filter the data and that um, um, those um, uh, those differences um, are um, uh, we're, we're basically sampling a very large uh, multivariate space and uh, choosing different, uh, different components of that space. Um, so uh, nonetheless, going forward, um, we then began uh, using three-center calling on each of the cancers. And uh, the results coming out of that, where we now were able to uh, superimpose validation data on it, uh, showed that in the, at least in the overlap, what was being called was extremely high, highly accurate. So uh, in the three center overlap shown here, 99 percent of the variants validated, and even when there were uh, just two centers making the call, the uh, percentage of validation was very high. Out in the uniques, the validation rates are much lower. Nonetheless, validation was occurring in the unique so that uh, uh, the three center calls at least can pick up false negatives, at least they're on the table for scientists to consider and accept or reject. Here's a similar analysis of uh, lung adenocarcinoma data done uh, by the Broad. And uh, uh, once again, uh, very high 100 percent validation rate in the three center overlap, uh, lower validation rates uh, in the, uh, around the outside. And uh, more recently in the, uh, this is the kidney clear cell uh, project uh, where we had 500 patients. This was the lar largest cohort at this time. And uh, looking at validation within 177 of the cases, this shows the number of mutations that were validated and the percentage that were valid in each segment of the overlap. And uh, you can see a very high validation rate in the three, in the, uh, at least if two centers made a call, and a much lower validation rate in the unique data. So uh, this led to two developments. The first was a metacaller developed by uh, Terry Speed, and this uh, metacaller he demonstrated was very highly accurate, and so it leads to a, uh, a recipe for being able to take the multicenter calling data and make it highly accurate. In order to achieve that high accuracy, though, uh, it's necessary to have validation data to calibrate each of the callers that are involved. But once that's done, you can make uh, very uh, accurate calls from the data. And so one possibility, uh, un unfortunately, prior to the marker papers coming out, we don't have the validation from all the centers. And so uh, one thing that could be done retrospectively now is to go back and uh, with the validation data available and the calls from each caller uh, uh, apply his method and uh, generate even more comprehensive mutation data sets. The other thing this did was lead to a formalization of the multicenter calling and uh, with the recognition that the multi, that, that the mutation callers are improving all, overall and different, uh, different callers detect different events. The validation cycles were taking too long to uh, lead to expeditious publication of the marker papers, and so we uh, began using multicenter calling in order to provide uh, uh, a significantly mutated gene list that's based on the uh, calibrated accuracies of calls made by two or more centers. 
So this gave us a path forward and uh, broke the conundrum of the problem we ran into with reviewers who never wanted to uh, take at face value the uh, mutation calls that were being provided without validation. Um, so, uh, so we accelerate the uh, submission of the marker papers now and um, Okay. Uh, we don't abandon validation. A valid validation is still brought in, uh, but that can go on while the paper is under review. Uh, uh, validation requiring a second uh, independent sequencing event. Okay. So where are we now? Uh, the other thing that the multi-center calling does is enable other uh, potential, potentially interested uh, researchers to add their callers in a, uh, and experiment with the development of new methods. And so now we have uh, for the adrenal cortical carcinoma project, which is underway um, and uh, 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 nearing uh, a paper. I think uh, earlier in this uh, earlier in yesterday's session, we saw a review of the work with this tumor, but now we've got five centers calling. You can see from this um, that there are still large numbers of unique calls, but now in the center through the, uh, I think through the advancement uh, and the improved sophistication of the calling, the uh, center is the most heavily weighted, so the overlap is looking much better. The fact that we still have uh, a number of calls on the outside and preliminary data uh, that I, I'm sorry I can't show you here, is that among these uh, calls in the unique section, we look in the RNA-seq data now and there are hundreds of events out here that are uh, part of, uh, that, that appear to be being expressed and therefore are probably valid somatic mutations. Um, so. Again, uh, we continue to sample from a large space, and every new logic that is applied picks up more of that sampling. Most of what's out here are events that are uh, at very low allele fractions, so they're subclonal events in general, although not all of them are. Some of them have just escaped one uh, or more of the uh, heuristic parameters that are used in filtering. Uh, so now uh, we have a second generation of mutation callers coming on, and uh, one of them uh, is being developed uh, uh, by the Genome Center in collaboration with uh, MD Anderson, which measures uh, a distance per position per sample to reflect a mutation evolution. And uncertainty estimates are based on a Bayesian Markov model, and therefore, uh, this method will come with a uh, calibrated certainty uh, akin to a Q value. Uh, method is now uh, uh, being refined called Viper by Wash U, and there's a uh, Mutec version 2 on the drawing board. So uh, the next r round of uh, mutation callers is going to have uh, even better accuracy and better sensitivity at low allele fraction. Uh, I don't think we'll see these outer unique sections decrease at all, and that's a good thing because that is going to be pulling in these very uh, low allele fraction subclonal mutations that uh, we want to have. These uh, new callers are being tested in the dream challenge as we go through dream one, two, and now we're in three. The callers from the sequencing centers, you can see, are at the very top of the list in what is probably a statistical dead heat. I think that speaks very well of the TCGA sequencing centers, and so uh, uh, we'll be looking forward to actually the final rendition of the Dream Challenge, which will use real data instead of synthetic data. So in conclusion, the TCGA uh, paradigm 
for mutation discovery is improved by multi-center calling. Um, this enables us to decrease the false negative rates. It delivers a set of somatic SNVs of calibrated accuracy, accelerates submission of marker papers, papers and sim stimulates development of new mutation callers by providing benchmarking on the fly. Um, a formal meta caller was developed, which may be useful in retrospectively refining mutation calls from TCGA uh, tumor sets. And finally, uh, one parting thought that I didn't talk about is that we're now starting to use validation in uh, or uh, uh, mutation calling in a lot of different contexts now. We have uh, RNA fusions, we have structural variation. Uh, all of those uh, mutation modes are likely to uh, uh, experience a similar phenomenon as we see in the SNV, and so uh, that needs to be checked and probably multi-algorithm uh, calling will be required there too. So uh, I'll just end with my acknowledgments of my colleagues who all contributed to this talk. Thank you. There, okay, one question, one just, burning question, just, please. Really quick running behind. Uh, for those, the multi callers, are you using the same underlying alignment, uh, uh, like DWA or bow tie? Uh, these are, yes, they're using the same uh, set of BAM files. Okay. Yeah. Um, we observe that there are some software files for like DWA, bow tie, if you use different software alignment, uh, they maybe have some difference. Uh, mutation core or mismatch. Yes, well, yeah, that's gonna be important for uh, comparing mutation profiles across tumors. And so it is necessary to go back and that's being done in the ICGC, TCGA whole genome analysis now, uh, but that is a very important point. So, uh, so TCGA is recommended DWA for overall alignment? I'm sorry, TCGA what? Uh, basically, I, I saw a lot of data was using DWA, so is this like? Well, this, this uh, I was talking about whole exome here, so, uh, uh, oh, sorry, yeah, so yeah, we were using BWA. Every, everybody's using BWA, but in different ways, actually. Okay, uh, I'd like to welcome our next speaker, Kyung Fan Lehman, who is from Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. We'll talk about extensive trans and cis QTLs revealed by large scale cancer genome analysis. Please.